Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Well, today I'm adding a layer onto one of my gel prints. And on this gel print, I know, I mean, I like how it looks, but it needs a focal image. It needs a couple more things on it. And I'm gonna use the InkAid image transfer process to get those on there. Here's the gel print that I wanna add some more onto it. It's great with all those colors, even with that rip in it there, I still love this print. But it needs kind of a focal image, something to really draw your eye towards. And I wanna put that down on that pink down on the bottom left. This is where image transfers are so handy. They are great for getting images of things added on as layers to whatever it is you're creating. I happen to be working on paper here, but you can do this on fabric, you can do it on wood, you can do it on metal. I just love how versatile it is. All right, so I've got the image and it is way bigger than that pink area. And this is the cool part, it doesn't matter. I'm not a big fan of fussy cutting or having to cut things perfectly on a line. And with this process, I don't have to. The reason for that is I'm gonna put the ink aid solution on there, but I'm only gonna put it on the pink, so that's the only place where the image will transfer. I don't actually have to carefully cut or figure anything out. I just have to put that transfer solution where I want the transfer to happen. So what's in that jar is a mixture of the transferase concentrate and 91% isopropyl alcohol. And how you mix it, the whole process, step-by-step, step, everything you need to know to get started with image transfers, I've got a whole video where I went deep into it for you and I'll have that link down below. The hardest part for me apparently is being able to pull that foam brush out of the jar. So I've got that solution on there and then I'm gonna brush it on whatever area where I wanna do the transfer. Notice how I'm just putting it on the pink. That means only the area where that solution is is where it'll transfer. So that will automatically get the image to fit the shape of that pink without me having to cut anything or do anything fancy or particular. One thing though that I do wanna make sure of is when I put this down, I'm putting the printed side down. You can press it down with your fingers or you can use a brayer to really, really lightly push that image down into the solution. But again, it is a very, very light touch and I prefer to use the brayer just because I tend to miss spots whenever I'm using my fingers. And you do wanna have nice contact between the image and also that solution. Once you've got it on there, then you need to wait about two minutes. If you happen to have a magical sense of time and you know when two minutes are up all on your own, I applaud you and I bow to your greatness. Me, I have no sense of time. So I have to set a timer on my phone because to me, sometimes I'll think two minutes have gone by and it's been 20 seconds and you do need to give it enough time to do what it needs to do so you can create that image transfer. The other thing is I will set the timer to help me remember to come back to it because I'll step away thinking, oh, it'll just be two minutes and all of a sudden it's 20 minutes. So timer is extremely helpful for me to know when to pull this up. Well, now those two minutes are up and it's time to lift up that transfer film. And as I'm doing it, I wanna lift it up very gently. I found if I go slowly and gently, I get a better transfer image. I've also found that sometimes it'll kind of fly away from me when I get to the very end of lifting it up. That's why I've planted that finger on the bottom right to hold the plastic until I get to the very end. That way it just doesn't slip away from me and I get a nice even pull over the whole thing. No cutting, no careful measuring, no deep thinking, and I got the image to fit just on that pink. I love how easy image transfers make that. Now on that piece of transfer film over there, I've used part of it, and the part that's been used can't be used again. But the part that still has image on it, that part hasn't been used once yet, so you betcha I will save that, and then I can use those remnants, those leftover bits, in another transfer another time. As I'm looking at this print, I want a bunch of big, beautiful writing up in that orange. Now I'd love it if I had the skills to do that kind of writing on my own, but I don't. I overthink it, I don't like my handwriting, and frankly, I don't practice it. So that's why I'm gonna use an image transfer up there with this writing. One of the advantages of doing an image transfer is you can audition things before you commit. So as I cut this writing to the general size of where I wanna put it, I can see if it has the look that I want. And oh, it most definitely does. And if you're wondering exactly how much that transferee solution to put on, how do you figure that out? That kind of stuff I've got all in that getting started video that I mentioned earlier. One of the things I haven't talked much about is the transfer film. 
And that is done on an inkjet printer. And if you can print something out on your inkjet printer, you can turn it into a transparency. InkAid does have a transfer film that you need to work with the transferee solution. The two of them work together. There's a coating on one side of the plastic, and that's the side that you need to print on through your inkjet printer. Now, inkjet printers that are pigment-based ink work best with this process. And how do you figure out if yours is? What exactly does that mean? Again, that's the kind of stuff that I've covered in depth in that getting started video that I mentioned. And again, I'll have a link down below for you. Now it's time to just wait those two minutes before we lift up that transfer film. Oh, and one of the questions that I've gotten from a couple people is, can you use the transfer film more than once? And no, it is single use transfer film. Well, now those two minutes are up and I am ready to lift up that transfer film. Now, this is a case where I really wish I had three hands. But the good news is, is I have a substitute to help me out because I want to keep that transfer film from going really quickly at the end. But I also need to hold the paper down because this is such a thin piece of book text. So what I'm going to do is just take that jar, just that little bit of weight there on the end will keep this transfer film from sort of flying away from my hands as I lift up that last little bit. Since only the areas where there is the transferee solution will you get a transfer, that means that stuff around the edge where there wasn't transferee solution, that stuff didn't transfer. It hasn't been used yet. So that means those little bits, you betcha I'm saving those. Every little bit of that transfer film can be used. If you're curious about image transfers and thinking about giving them a try, but wondering what you might print onto that transfer film, I have got a sheet of images for you. It's got a couple of vintage photos on there, a couple of colorful sparks, and then a piece of vintage ephemera also. And there's a link down below so where you can get it emailed to you. So that way, if you're thinking about it, you've got a place to start. There's also a cheat sheet for you or a quick reference guide for how to do the image transfer process so you can print that out and have that next to you too. Well, thanks so much for joining me for today's video. If you've enjoyed it, I'd so appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, if you want to see more of the fun, more of what I'm up to, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll know as soon as I have a new video out. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.